Okay, this is going to be SKT versus KT, game number three. So SKT with a pretty clean and decisive win over KT in game number two. Now here, going into game number three, first bans by KT are Rise, Sivir being banned away from SKT. I do think that Sivir is actually probably uh, better on red side than she is on uh, blue. So that's pretty actually, that's pretty nice. Kog'Maw being banned away by SKT. I've said time and time again, but I do think he is the best uh, ADC in the game currently. Sejuani being banned away by SKT and Galio being banned away. So SKT basically saying that they don't want to have to deal with that. Ends up letting Ezreal through. They pick that up for Deft immediately. Thal gets Vladimir again. Could be a flex, but unlikely. And then SKT picks up J4 for blank. Looks like they're hovering that. Now that means that you are giving a zero away. And so the question is, if you're so comfortable with Azir, who's, he's one of the few champions in the game right now that can basically just stand against all. Um, he fits into basically every single team composition, um, and he's also just particularly good at simply shutting down certain team comps. So uh, the question ends up becoming, like, why not just take Azir uh, with Vlad right off the bat? That's something that you want to do. You could be worried that... Um, if they do end up taking away Jarvan 4 or something, that you're diminished to using like a Kha'Zix pick. But realistically, uh, unless you walk into a Nightmare in the mid lane, you should be able to get away with actually a Kha'Zix. That, that seems like... Um, like, you, you, could, you could get away with the Kha'Zix. It's going to depend on like how you want to do your, your bottom lane matchup. Um, but, I mean, it's just, Yeah. Kha'Zix is not banned. Okay, they end up going with Callista. And Tom Kench also picked up for Ezreal. So I think this is dissuading them from maybe trying to go for... Never mind, they actually ban away the Malzahar. I was just about to say that. Kha'Zix now banned away, as well as Jace. And the Jace versus Vladimir matchup is extremely volatile. And again, that Vladimir could be a flex. Zarath ends up being banned away. Another traditional uh, Azir answer. And so now, like, there's still there's still Kassadin, there's still LeBlanc, but the problem is if you end up going with, like, a Kassadin or something, he needs so much ramp, it really slows you down, and it doesn't really fit into the narrative of SKT's uh, team composition. Um, and then also you're gonna end up hurting yourself pretty bad because uh, it's gonna guarantee that Azir goes like Banshee's Veil. Um, they're just gonna have a lot of magic resistance on their team. It's gonna really stunt your your own Kassadin and your Vladimir. Unlike the last team composition, Azir doesn't really care because his damage is so sustained and periodic. And now it looks like SKT, they go for the Braum with the Callista. They're really, really favoring this Braum. And they end up picking up the Orn to go up against the Maokai. Interestingly enough, I think... Well, never mind. So we're going to have a Vladimir in mid lane. So it does end up getting flexed there. And the thing that... Oop, let's just go back to that really quick. So the, thing, the things that we can talk about here. So bottom lane can spiral, can spiral out of control, right? But Deft and Mata do have the option to just survive, right? Um... The thing here is that basically both top lane matchup or both top and mid matchups are vulnerable to Jarvan. Okay, um, if Vladimir gets ahead, he can continue to be oppressive, but Pawn should actually still be able to survive and then just go even in lane. Uh, whereas in, in the top lane matchup, if Orn ends up getting ahead, it's just going to be gang sitting. Um, if Orn gets ahead and then Faker has priority and then Blank plays left hand side, leaving Bang and Effort basically on an island in bottom lane, and if the dragon's really bad, then things can be really really good for SKT. Um, the other thing here is that this is basically, so this, this is a pretty interesting pick. Um, so I mentioned Kha'Zix before, right? If they went for the Vladimir, uh, Azir, Kha'Zix being the AD source of jungle. Jax is something that is getting really popular in Korea. Um, and Jax is just honestly a really obnoxious champion. Don't listen to a certain someone when he says that he's bad. Um, 
So Jax actually could have fit into that team composition as like a a really nice pick if you had the Vladimir and the Azir and then you just have the Jax as an engage. He's obnoxiously tanky, he offers a ton of utility inside of team fights, he offers a lot of pressure, and then he just he scales really, really, really well. Thank you for that advertisement. So KT's team composition, <clears throat> they're vulnerable to the all-in. If SK Telecom ends up getting ahead, then it's basically lights out. Very, very difficult for Score to actually make anything happen in mid or bot lane. Um, but if KT for some reason can end up getting ahead, it is almost, it, it's virtually impossible uh, for SKT to recover. They need to be ahead in order to have the edge. They spike it like one and two items, they temporarily fall off, and then it's pretty much it. Vladimir is like their last hope to continuously just keep moving. So the entire point of this game is basically decided pre like 18, 20 minutes. And let's see what the first dragon of the game is. First dragon of the game is Infernal. Obviously KT likes that a lot more than SKT. And the reason that I say that is because we don't know if Blank is gonna go for tank Jarvan or AD Jarvan, most likely tank. So we're gonna have tank stats here, tank stats here. We're gonna have uh, Vladimir, which is, you know, he's tanky-ish, but his AP items, he, he's not going ham on AP, right? So the, the bolster that he gets from Infernal, not completely enormous. I mean, it's good. He's still a champion that does like Infernal. Um, but, you know, it, it's not the same degree as, uh, like, an Azir or something. Or, like, a, an Azir, a Ziggs, a Zeroth, whatever. Kalista, attack speed based. She benefits from it. She gets, obviously, more AD. You know, she's attacking really quick. It helps her, etc. But, on the flip side, you look at Jax. Loves it. Azir, loves it. Ezreal, loves it. Blank opens up with red, goes into wraiths, passes immediately over to his blue. And now I think that basically, actually much like the, the TSM thing that we talked about, Score is pretty fortunate to, he just needs to control ward his team's half of the river, and then he can actually just get away with power farming and letting Vladimir uh, do his thing. If Score is going to look for anything, it's probably just going to be up in top lane with Smeb. Can look to put Orn behind, get that Maokai ahead. If Maokai is ahead, it, it's almost lights out because the only answer to it is going to be Bang. Bang is going to be the only answer to uh, a super fed Smeb's Maokai. So this is like really, really, really problematic. Score already back on the left hand side. He's picking up that Scuttle Crab. You can see Blank getting his Golems. You can just see the speed of uh, Jax. Gets the Green Smite. Pretty unique thing that I don't actually know about is I don't know if uh, Jax can solo Drake. It's a pretty rare thing in competitive. Usually it gets sniffed out really quickly, especially with the amount of wards everywhere. Now you can see the Jax going, oh, Kenny? Oh, okay, never mind. He's just going to come and get the Scuttle Crab. And I really like what Score is doing. He's basically saying, like, look, the map's going to be divided. No one's doing anything. Takes away the Blasting Clone, hits the Scryer, knows exactly what Blank's allowed to do, and he doesn't have to do anything. Really, really excellent jungling by score so far. Blank is getting completely outmaneuvered in this jungle, not really looking for anything, not looking to make things happen. And now Score's going to be able to just fall back and continue to power farm. And look, I mean, uh, Blank is... He's, he's playing against uh, Maximilian Pegasus. Score already back on the left-hand side. It's synchronizing with Smeb's uh, recall teleport. And also, he's on the, the left-hand side of the map, and Blank's red is coming up. So he's matching Blank on this side of the map. You can see the Smeb actually... Had some pressure up in top, 
managed to come in there, get some intel, runs down through the river, looks for any pink wards. They hand over the blue buff to Pawn. Score is just getting so far ahead. Like, the, the gold score seems really even, right? And most people looking at this, they're probably like, oh, well, Jarvan just has one camp, you know, like behind or something, uh, or two camps. You can't allow that to happen. I love what score is doing. Doesn't need to invade. He doesn't need to, to look for ganks on mid or bottom. Just needs to keep controlling the game. And Bang is not getting far enough ahead. There's no action really going down into bottom. Yeah, and now he's coming in. He's going to actually sneak the Infernal Drake, and this is a nightmare. Never mind. Oh, Blank. Uh-oh. Oh, Blank didn't even have... Uh, Blank didn't... Wait, did he have Smite? Wait. No, he didn't even have Smite. Oh, that's tragic. So just take a look at this. I mean, everyone, everyone on Team KT basically just got a longsword, right? Azir obviously gets a little bit more it's super, super powerful. Really, really obnoxious. Very early lead. It looks like the next dragon of the game, another Infernal. So SKT rolling really... I haven't seen them roll this bad since uh, Misfits and Worlds. Misfits at Worlds. KT are so far ahead right now. Gold lead is 200, 300 gold, right, for KT. Don't let that mislead you. KT basically need to get Callista to her first item, get Warren to the first item. They need to make sparks fly. Vladimir not getting any turret damage though onto uh, Pawn's you know tier one mid, and that's super super big because we we talk about the phalanx inside of the blue side jungle all the time. It's really really obnoxious with a control utility mage. And I mean, Azir, he is control, he is utility, but he's also, you know, he's an AP carry. He's one of the strongest carries in the game. Bring in, yeah. And I really like what they're doing here. So you take a look at this, right? Pawn doesn't want to fall behind on tempo. This lane's arriving. Pawn's out of mana. Scores here. Could he kill Faker if Faker messed up? Sure. Now they're going to shove out the lane together. They're bringing in Mata just for, you know, a little extra safety. He's able to use the uh, Tom Kench ultimate. Ezreal, completely safe on his own in bottom. He has that, uh, you know, he ha he's really slippery. He has his flash, he has his heal, he has his arcane shift. Blank now going to come in and maybe take away the blue. You can see Smeb actually was coming down, it seemed, to ward it. They steal the blue away from Pawn. And that's a minor victory. But the problem is, is they're, on a, they're on a clock. They didn't do anything early. Blank was just basically power farming. And you can't power farm against Jax and expect the game to go even. This, this is that little kind of a mix-up that I was talking about that SKT could have done. They could have taken the Vlad top. They could have taken the Azir mid lane. And then, you know, I suggested Kha'Zix. I, I blanked. I should have just said Jax. They could have taken Jax in that scenario and done to KT what KT is doing to them right now. And it would have been super, super strong. This neutralized mid-game is just so obnoxious. And score. Ooh, Mata comes in with Deft. And it's okay. If KT loses top tier 1 or bot tier 1 or something, like if they, if they have to make these plays with Deft and Mata and they, you know, they lose some turret HP, it's all okay. The mid-tier 1 turret is the most important turret in the game. And you can see that Pawn not having that blue buff. He doesn't have the ammo to just constantly stay in lane and cast his soldiers at max range against Faker. Faker exerting a lot of pressure, he's getting a, you know, a CS lead and stuff, but uh, when you consider that KT's gold is worth more on their champions, in addition to the fact that they have an Infernal Drake, it's really, really hard. Now right now, one of the good things that SKT are getting done here is they're taking a lot of damage onto Mata and Deft, and the pressure was actually so severe that we saw some teleports come in from KT. So what this ends up meaning is that Faker's getting, you know, Faker's in mid lane, Blank is here, full HP, Bang is still relatively healthy, 
Effort doesn't actually need any mana as long as he offers his Ignite and his passive, and they can actually look to capitalize on the Infernal, because mana doesn't have the Abyssal Voyage, and there's just so much pressure being exerted onto this bottom tier 1 turret. They should look to capture Infernal Drake right now, because they have the Callista. Yep. It's really, really, really nice trade timing. They knew that Infernal Drake's coming up, and they just go super ham at Deft and Mata, and basically say, hey look, Pawn's coming off of a recall, he didn't have any mana, he didn't have the blue buff, and your bottom lane can't sustain, and there's no way that even if you call in Smeb that you're going to manage to somehow get this Infernal away from us. Now, SKT, I mean, biting back, getting that Infernal, really good. Unfortunately for both teams now, third Infernal is spawning. The worst dragon that could probably spawn for either team uh, at this stage would probably be Cloud Drake. Pretty sure Cloud Drake would probably be the worst at this stage. Normally I would say Ocean, but there's a lot of components at play that make Ocean not completely terrible. So all the lands are still really stuck inside of the laning phase. You look at all the turrets HPs across the map. Mid-tier one has taken a little bit. Faker caught out in the shop. Not able to live there. And this is a really, really big tempo swing. You can see the bang and effort. They were looking for a pretty heavy trade. And Faker going down is a lot worse than it seems. Doesn't even matter. I didn't, I didn't even see it coming. I mean, I, sh I made a shop reference, but it was basically pointless. No, stick to anybody. No, all right. <laughs> um, so, okay. Deft and Mata. Doing pretty okay in bottom land. Iceborne Gauntlet completed. And this actually further plays against that, that one item, two item spike that SKT gets. Because the Iceborne Gauntlet comes, on, uh, comes online sooner. Faker getting traded on really, really hard. But Pawn... Like, see, th these are the things that they happen in, in NA, and it's just sort of like, why, right? So you see the trade that's happening in bottom lane. <clears throat> you see Pawn coming over, and then he commits to a trade, right? But you know that Thal has teleport, and realistically, you can't kill Faker from this spot. So what are we actually doing? Like, you don't need to do this. I, I was just actually talking about, uh, you know, the other day, like two days ago or something with an LCS player. Like... KT doesn't need to do anything. They win by doing nothing. So, like, basically, there is, you know, um, there, there's, like, there's, like, a standoff or something, right? You know, you have two people in a room, and this guy has reinforcements on the way, which is basically KT scaling, okay? And there is a gun, like, in the middle of the room, and this guy has a knife, right? So if this guy goes for it, this guy can, you know, go for him. If this guy goes for it, something could end up going down, you know, in the struggle, and he could, you know, whatever. So this analogy isn't totally on point, and I know that maybe I should consider, you know, going into art, you know, after esports, but um, this guy doesn't need to do anything, and yet he wants to. And it, it, it's a really, really poor behavior to acknowledge that you're, you're basically bleeding them of resources they're running out you know if, if someone's on an island right and you know you can control all the water around it and cut off any food or water from going in eventually they die and that's basically exactly what's happening in this game is skt they need to break your you know your your turtle around the island they need to find an opening and get out to get food and water and they can't as long as you hold this you win they starve. And KT, looking for something needlessly, you see this happen in NA, you see it happen in EU, and you're seeing it happen here in Korea from even like one of the best teams in the world. So it's really, really unfortunate. They even lose their tier one mid turret. Cut off water from an island. Yeah, make it, a, I don't even know. You know what I'm saying. God. What if it rains? Checkmate. Now you're talking about Infernal Drakes. You see what I you see what I did there? It's 
sort of like you, you have someone in a hold and all you have to do is wait for the cops to come. And then instead of just holding the, you know, the hold or something, you try to like hurt them and you end up losing the hold. KT basically just has a stranglehold and all they need to do is not fight. So what do they do? They fight, of course. Let's look at everything leading up to this. Infernal Drake's coming up in 30 seconds. And just like we saw Bang and Effort do in bottom, you see Faker go aggro right there, tries to get something out of pawn, establishing mid-priority, mid-control. I love how Thal is just rotating down. And then Mata, out of position. He ends up going down. And now it's KT. I mean, they, they've basically already won the, the dragon. They went on a little bit too hard. And you basically just see what's happening. Then, K then KT went too hard. And then SKT bites back. Deft able to get a pick off. And now they're gonna they're gonna end up winning the infernal. So we can just watch this one more time. This is like something that should actually be in like the breakdown thing. Let's take a look at this. So Mata comes up, he tries to Tom Kench. And he should have flashed sooner. He, he was holding flash. He should have flashed sooner, spit uh, the Scuttle Crab back. And then they, they kill the Scuttle Crab, if that's what they're really going for. So they end up catching out Mata. And Mata's actually pretty important at this stage of the game. Def's trying to do as much damage as he possibly can. And now, from this freeze frame, SKT should just go to the Infernal Drake. And they can control this narrow corridor. They can get the Infernal, and they can convert it into mid. And they can just actually send Thal back up to top lane, because Smeb doesn't have TP. And everything would actually just be good from that point on. But instead, Blank just ends up taking so much damage, Effort took a little bit more damage, Thal takes more damage, and they go a little bit too ham. And you see this like narrow little corridor that SKT have. It's very, very difficult for, for KT to actually penetrate that if Deft and Azir don't have ammo to just keep poking and, and shooting from long range. Then <clears throat> SKT goes a little bit too hard, and they end up paying the price for it. Second Infernal Drake. I just want to see, what did that just give him? Maybe it'll show me. <clears throat> He's got another Longsword. He's got 980 from that. Just showing the replay one more time. They're so greedy for kills. They don't take the slow game. And now, because the Infernal's off the map, there's no mountains on either team, SKT don't have the ability to really threaten a Baron, because now, like, how are you going to penetrate this? Bottom lane stays mid. Tom Kench gets everywhere. Orin can't do anything against Maokai. Azir stays top. It's game over. It's a lock. SKT has to find an opening. We saw this, Optic versus Team Liquid. Optic didn't understand that the only way they lose the game is if they come out of their turtle. The only way is if they break their phalanx and give Liquid an opening. The same way how the only way that KT can lose by continuing to stall out this game, it's just like the jackpot thing. If Team A is at 30k and Team B is at 25k, and then both teams increase at 1k a minute, you know, 1k gold a minute, Someone's going to hit 35k first, and I'll give you a hint. It's not this team. All right, quick maths. It's all that you need to do. If right now, let's say KT has a 70% chance to win. If they just wait, it goes up to 90. Why not just wait? doesn't make any sense. Obviously, yes, you know, there, there is mechanical failure. People are humans and stuff. But realistically, it's not an excuse to make poor decisions on, on a macro level. Look at how tanky Deft is. Why, why get, like, this is the only way SKT wins. Why are you guys here? Go, go get your, go get your fucking red, demonetize. Go get your red, okay? Wait for this wave bottom. Someone eat golems. They're not doing Baron. 
You don't need this vision. Get a pink ward in here. Yeah, I already have a pink ward in here. Wait for this wave to crash back into you. Yeah, I get it. You guys, maybe you're going to get 750 gold and they're going to get 1k for the first minute. And then it's going to be handed back over to you. And they cannot do anything. But unless I want to fight. Yeah, of course you do. You know, because it's a video game and not real life. If it was real life, you'd fucking hold that phalanx like your life depended on it. It is so hard for SKT to win this. Like, it fights inside of these angles. They get the Baron, which they never should have been allowed to do. Ever. So... God, it's so, it's so sick. We're gonna look back on, on this stuff in like 10 years from now, and, you know, bronze players are gonna criticize KT. This should be as commonly understood as, I, I don't even know, this should be as commonly understood as like uh, jungle roots or like jungle paths, you know? Like the initial ones, like three camps or four camps or whatever. Handing your second blue to mid laner. So now, interestingly enough, we're seeing basically a, a mirror of the optic tl game even though tl in this case skt got an, uh, an advantage they got the baron kt are still in the driver's seat they're actually still ahead doesn't feel like it so kt needs to just get over their human emotions and identify that like hey you know we might not kill them now but we will soon it's like biding your time so you have like you know, I don't know, an abusive stepdad and you're gonna beat the shit out of him one day. There's no reason to do it when, you know, you're 15 years old or something and you're puny, okay? Wait a few years, get some muscle, right? It's the same exact thing that KT needs to do. Like, could they maybe win the fight? Yeah, you know, maybe. Do you need to right now? No. It's funny how SK Telecom actually getting the Baron made KT do what they should have already been doing. Yes, correct. Each minute that passes, the percentage chance of KT winning increases. Score looking for vision inside of his red jungle. Faker coming in with the flank. And oh, look at that! Look, the team fights aren't close. Hmm. Huh, who would have thunk? Hmm. Now imagine if we didn't give him Baron and uh, we just waited. Imagine that. Yeah. No, but you need to make plays, right? You had to do something immediately because that's important. You know, we're not in a tournament and our careers don't matter, you know, or depend on wins and losses or they're not affected by it. Yeah. All right. Good. Glad to know that, you know, the team fight wasn't close, you know. Glad to know that, you know, we identified that before we stepped up in mid lane for no reason. It was very important that we got the 120 gold from minions, you know, three seconds faster. Now, even if SKT backs up here, right? Let's rewind. Let's say that they back up immediately after killing a score, right? They could just go into mid, shove it in. They could send, uh, <clears throat> they, they could send maybe like one person, rush down, eat this wave, and then path all the way to Baron. They could do that. They could control the vision. In fact, actually, it's probably really what they should do. 
But is KT even out of it from that point? No, they're not. Now, KT with the Barrett, there's no way. SKT are so far behind. They are so, so, so far behind. They just have to hold the turtle. Hold the ball. Oh, here comes the fail. Here comes the guy in the movie 300. He's going to try. Just hold the ball. Faker's coming in. Kite back. Oh, God. Where have I seen this before? Where, where have I seen this before? Rather than identifying what KT wants to do, they should identify what, is S, what does SKT need to do. Sometimes it's not about what you want, it's what about your opponent needs. It's like having ace-king and they have ace-queen, right? You don't need a king. You don't need it. You win if a queen doesn't come. Or, you know, a, a king jack 10, whatever. Like a, you know? And it's like, even with each, like, loss, it, 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 it basically doesn't even begin to crack the surface. SKT is like Mount Everest, and KT is like the Mariana Trench. Like, it <laughs> doesn't matter if the ground goes up a little bit. You're still pretty down under. It's all just a, a positioning fight. <clears throat> Elder is the best chance SKT ever has to win. And it's mostly because it just makes it so obnoxious. Okay. <clears throat> they giving bang blue yep bang is killing everything so the final decisive fight is going to be a baron realistically as long as kt control this area with pink wards double blue like they have okay lots of pink wards love it okay lot love it right um this could probably even just be changed to a sweeper this could probably just be changed to a sweeper because of saplings right you clear out all this vision you shove up mid to here, you push the wave into them, and you just hold this. And then as soon as Baron comes up and mid is dark, top's good, bot's good, you advance forward as a siege engine. Just basically be a walking juggernaut. It doesn't even matter, but it's like just so sad to see, you know, like p people people watch this and they're like, wow, great. And I'm like, no, not great. Their comp is just so much better. Like the game, the game reached a stage where it didn't matter anymore. Blank could have done stuff different and the o score just eviscerated him, by the way. That has to be this. This is one of the best jungle performances pre like. 12 i've ever like i've seen i have to tweet that out by the way this is it for the recording um kt showcased the same exact things that i think caused them problems last year and plagued them 
and it's sad to see it keep happening. Um, SKT actually put up a much better fight uh, than I would have given them credit for, especially because it almost looked like they were actually going to overcome a mountain um, at some points in the game. Um, so, I mean, there's credit for them there. So, that's it for this one.